The portable fire extinguisher is an extremely common type of fire protection device. You will find extinguishers in almost all types of occupancies, residential, business, industrial, and of course on fire apparatus. In this program on portable extinguishers, we will present information about fire extinguishers and demonstrate how to use many different types of handheld extinguishers. The training objectives are to present the classification and rating system used for extinguishers, to show the general operating instructions for portable extinguishers, to describe different types of handheld fire extinguishers and demonstrate how to use each type, and to show a firefighter's responsibilities when inspecting portable fire extinguishers. To be able to recognize if you have the correct extinguisher for a fire, you need to know the classification and rating system used to identify fire extinguishers. The classification of fire extinguishers corresponds with the four classes of fire, A, B, C, and D. Class A fires involve ordinary combustibles, such as paper, wood, cloth, and many plastics. Class B fires involve flammable and combustible liquids and gases, such as gasoline, oil, and alcohols. Class C fires are found in energized electrical equipment, such as household appliances, computers, or overhead transmission lines. And Class D fires involve combustible metals, such as aluminum, magnesium, and sodium. Fire extinguisher ratings apply to Class A and B extinguishers only. The ratings show the extinguishing potential of the extinguisher. The higher the rating number, the greater the extinguishing potential. For example, a 4A water extinguisher can extinguish twice as much fuel as a 2A water extinguisher, and a 5BC carbon dioxide extinguisher can extinguish five times as much as a 1BC. Many extinguishers have multiple classifications and ratings. A common portable extinguisher found in occupancies is a 2A 20BC type. This multi-purpose extinguisher can be used on ordinary combustibles, on flammable liquids and on electrical equipment. The classification and ratings must be clearly marked on the faceplate of all extinguishers. It can be marked with a letter and number such as this one, or it can be marked with a picture symbol marking such as this. Let's look at some fire extinguisher faceplates. Be aware that the classification can appear anywhere on the faceplate. Look carefully at these four extinguishers and determine what type of fire each could be used for. Although there are different types of extinguishers for different types of fires, the general operating instructions for all handheld extinguishers are the same. General operating instructions for handheld fire extinguishers can be remembered by the letters PASS or PASS. The P stands for pull the pin at the top and break the plastic or wire band. The A stands for aim the nozzle toward the fire. If the hose is clipped to the body of the extinguisher, you will have to release it and then point. The S stands for squeeze the handle above the carrying handle to discharge the extinguishing agent. When you release the handle, the discharge will stop. It's best to try a short test while you approach the fire to be sure the extinguisher is working correctly. The second S stands for sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the flames to disperse the agent. When the fire seems to be out, wait and watch for smoldering hot spots. Apply additional agent as needed. Don't leave until you are sure that the fire is out.
Now, let's look at each of the different types of extinguishers and see how you use each type to put out a fire. Before using any fire extinguisher, read the label to be sure you have the right one for the job. The most common types of portable handheld fire extinguishers are water, AFFF foam, halon, carbon dioxide, dry chemical, and dry powder. There are two general types of water extinguishers, pump tank extinguishers and stored pressure extinguishers. Water extinguishers can only be used on Class A fires. To use a pump tank water extinguisher, carry it to the location of the fire, pump the handle with one hand, and direct the water stream with the other. Okay, walk to it a little bit. To use a stored pressure water extinguisher, Carry the extinguisher to the fire, holding the shutoff device in one hand and the hose in the other hand. Release the shutoff device and direct the water at the target. AFFF stands for Aqueous Film Forming Foam. These extinguishers are used on Class A or Class B fires. They look like stored pressure water extinguishers, but the difference is that they have a concentrated foam agent as well as water in the tank. They also have a special nozzle that mixes air with the solution, making the discharge a foam instead of a liquid. These extinguishers are especially valuable for putting out liquid fuel fires. To use an AFFF extinguisher, approach the fire and release the shutoff device. Sweet. Point the nozzle at the base of the fire and apply the foam with a side-to-side -side sweeping motion across the width of the fire. Halon 1211 and Halon 1301 extinguishers are primarily designed for Class B and Class C fires. The Halon 1211 extinguisher uses a liquefied compressed gas as the extinguishing agent. When discharged, the extinguisher releases a clear liquid stream. To operate a Halon 1211 extinguisher, carry it by the top handle to the fire location. You will have to get quite close to the fire because this extinguisher has a very limited range. Aim the discharge at the base of the flames, sweeping the flame from the burning surface. Keep applying the agent even after the flames are extinguished to prevent reignition. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are effective with Class B and Class C fires. The discharge is a gas that smothers the fire, taking away the oxygen that is needed for combustion. To use a carbon dioxide extinguisher, carry it to the location of the fire holding the top handle. Prepare to squeeze the shutoff handle while pointing the discharge horn at the base of the fire. Be aware that CO2 extinguishers are very loud when they expel the agent. Also, keep your hands on the handle in back of the discharge horn because the discharge is very cold and can cause freeze burns. On flammable liquid fires, it is best to sweep the flame from the burning surface starting at the near edge of the fire and moving forward. Continue to apply the discharge after the flames are extinguished to prevent a reflash. Dry chemical extinguishers are the most common portable fire extinguishers in use today. There are two basic types, ordinary dry chemical extinguishers, which are for Class B and Class C fires, 
and multi-purpose dry chemical extinguishers, which are rated for class A, B, and C fires. Whichever type you have, the operation of all dry chemical extinguishers is basically the same. As the name implies, the agent inside a dry chemical extinguisher is a chemical that comes out in a dry powdery cloud. To operate a dry chemical extinguisher, you first determine if it is a stored pressure type, which looks like a stored pressure water extinguisher, or a cartridge operated type, which has a separate agent tank and pressure cylinder. To operate the stored pressure type, simply pull the pin and squeeze the shutoff handle and the chemical will discharge. To operate the cartridge type, remove the hose from its stored position, point the extinguisher away from people, and press down on the activation plunger. Wait a couple of seconds for the agent tank to charge, and then squeeze the control handle on the nozzle to discharge the chemical. Attack the fire starting at the near edge and progress forward with a side-to-side -side sweeping motion. Normal extinguishers should generally not be used on burning metal or Class D fires. These fires present special control problems that require you to use the correct extinguishing agent. If the wrong agent is used, it can intensify the problem. Class D fire extinguishing agents are usually in a dry powder form. They may be applied by hand or from a fire extinguisher. To apply an agent by hand, scoop or shovel it up and then gently apply it over the burning metal, being careful to keep intact any crust that may have formed. Keep applying the agent until you have completely covered the fire deep enough to make a smothering blanket of chemical. Stand by to be ready to apply more agent if hot spots should develop. Do not disturb the material until it is cooled and can be disposed of safely. To be ready for immediate and effective use, portable fire extinguishers must be regularly inspected and maintained. The three important factors that determine the potential effectiveness of a fire extinguisher are, first, accessibility, second, serviceability, and third, ability to operate. Determine accessibility by checking that the extinguisher is in the correct location and that it is easily accessible. Check to see if you can easily read the operating instructions on the extinguisher faceplate. Inspect its serviceability by first checking the inspection tag and noting the date of the last inspection, maintenance, or recharging. Examine the lock pins and tamper seals to see if it has been actuated or tampered with. Look for any physical damage that might impair its operation. Check the discharge nozzle or horn for obstructions, cracks, or dirt accumulation. Determine if it is full of agent and pressurized. If an extinguisher is found to be deficient by more than 10%, it should be removed from service and replaced. Determine the user's ability to operate by conducting training for employees or other occupants that may be first on the scene. Fire extinguisher maintenance is the responsibility of the property owner. Fire extinguishers should be thoroughly inspected at least once a year. Some types of extinguishers will require a thorough examination by a manufacturer's representative at regular intervals. Owners should keep records of maintenance and inspections, and fire service inspectors should review these records during the visit.
portable fire extinguishers are a first line of safety that can be effective on many small incipient fires. In this program on fire extinguishers, we have shown the classification and rating system used for extinguishers, general instructions for operating handheld extinguishers, a description of different types of handheld fire extinguishers, and a demonstration of how to use each type, and a firefighter's responsibilities when inspecting portable fire extinguishers found in occupancies within the jurisdiction. Portable handheld extinguishers come in many shapes, sizes, and types. Learning how to use the correct type of extinguisher for your work area before you have a fire is your best assurance that you will be able to extinguish a fire if it happens.